Last video I mentioned that I wanted to be the first person to create a game using Unity's Experimental Entities 1.0, and despite me trying, well, that didn't quite happen. Look, I really love all the new features that have been added in Experimental Entities 1.0, and some of the things were so awesome to work with. However, I do just gotta be honest about my development experience, and unfortunately, it was not the smoothest thing ever. So in today's video, I do just want to bring up a couple of points about my initial development experience, and I hope this helps you make the decision and determination if you want to use Entities 1.0, if it makes sense for you right now, whether you're starting a new project or upgrading an existing project. And make sure you watch to the end of the video because I'm gonna be providing you some development resources that you can use regardless if you're going to be using 1.0 or sticking with version 0.51. Spoilers, I am gonna be releasing that nearly five hour tutorial video after all. Now before we get into it in earnest, I do just wanna give a major shout out to all the Unity development teams who've been working really hard on dots to bring this experimental entities 1.0 to light i know that they've been working extremely hard and i'm sure been extremely busy with all the things that they needed to get ready before they could actually release this so first of all congratulations on getting that all together and getting something out with this video i don't want to sound like i'm too negative on 1.0 right now unfortunately you know my initial development experiences were really not the greatest, but I am really excited about, you know, all the new features that you've been adding in, and they've really been a major improvement um, as far as, you know, new additions to the game engine. And again, I do just want to say thank you for your hard work, and I hope with this video I can kind of, you know, bring some of these issues to light so we hopefully have a better experience when we actually get to, you know, the actual official releases of 1.0 hopefully very soon. Also, very much looking forward to hanging out with those of you who are working out of the Montreal office because I will be at the Montreal office for Unite in just a couple of weeks. And if any of you also are going to be at the Montreal office for Unite, definitely feel free to say hello if you see me. All right, so let's actually get into it. So the first major point that I wanted to bring up is editor instability. Unfortunately, the Unity editor crashed quite a number of times on me. You know, it didn't just crash once, it didn't crash twice, it didn't even crash three times but it crashed a total of 31 times over the first two days of development where I was trying to build out this Ludum Dare uh, game jam project. Unfortunately, you know, I was just crashing, doing all sorts of simple operations, you know, whether I was like saving something, manipulating some assets, editing prefabs. It happened a bunch of times when I was creating builds or maybe editing some things with shader graph didn't really seem like there was a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it, but it unfortunately was just crashing on me so many times and it was just such a frustrating development experience, unfortunately, because I did just want to, you know, build out some cool project with, you know, all these new tool sets that we have available to us. But, you know, the editor just kept crashing on me and it was like, you know, anytime that I started building up some kind of momentum, it would just kind of crash on me. And unfortunately that was a a real bummer. Now in Matt Fuad's blog post, he did mention that there are going to be some critical fixes that are going to be implemented into a newer version of the Unity editor. It's a little bit unclear about what those critical fixes actually are or when that particular version of the uh, Unity editor is going to be released, but I really do hope that a newer version of the Unity editor will resolve some of those issues that I was having. However, I did try, you know, basically making a new project, um, just like a much simpler one. And unfortunately I have had maybe like two or three crashes, but I've been developing that project for a little bit now. Um, and it definitely has not been crashing as much. Now, the second point that I wanted to bring up is related to the dots physics package. And unfortunately the dots physics package is pretty broken and I'd say almost unusable at this point. Now it technically does everything still correctly. Like you can do ray casts and collision queries and all that. And that all works well and good, but there are some kind of like major issues with it. So there's this one bug where if you, you know, click off into the editor, it basically breaks all of physics. If you have any dynamic bodies, they'll all fall through the floor and all of a sudden your ray cast targets won't work. So if you have say like, you know, ray casts to click to select things in the game, you can start you know, clicking around and it won't actually register those clicks. And this makes the debugging experience extremely frustrating because it's you can't really go back and forth between the editor and the game view to test things out. But because of that, I'd say that if your project uses dots physics at all, I would not recommend upgrading to Entities 1.0 right now just because the development experience is 
really not in a good place right now. I do hope that they will have maybe a patch to fix some of those uh, issues because then it will be actually much more workable as long as we can kind of have like a good, you know, debugging experience where it doesn't completely break the engine when you click out into the editor. Third point that I wanted to bring up is that you're forced into the subscene workflow. Now the subscene workflow is great. There's a lot of advantages of using it. However, it is quite different than the conversion workflow. I've particularly highlighted the conversion workflow in most of my ECS videos on this channel. So it is a quite of a big shift between a lot of the things that I've been showcasing. So if you've been watching any of my videos on ECS, you'll know the conversion workflow is basically when we can take a game object and then we put that convert to entity script on it. And then we can also have, you know, authoring components, which we'll put on there. And then when we actually go play the game, it's actually going to convert those game objects into entities. Now you can't do that at all in Experimental 1.0. Basically the way that you create entities through the editor is by adding them all through subscenes. So it is a little bit of a different workflow and things to get used to. And so because of that, if you are making a project that uses the conversion workflow quite heavily, you're probably going to have a little bit of a difficult time actually converting to the subscene workflow just because that it is quite different and you do have to structure your project in a different way for everything to work as expected. The fourth point that I'd like to bring up is the new baking workflow. Again, I think the new baking workflow is really great, but it is going to be a quite significant change from the existing authoring workflow, which we're used to already. So with the existing authoring workflow, you know, we would create these mono behaviors that would implement the I convert game object to entity. And then, you know, we do all the kind of logic and stuff in there. And, you know, they work pretty well, but sometimes they could get, you know, a little bit messy at times. And I think the new baking workflow does a lot to resolve that. However, again, this is something that you're kind of forced into. So there's no real, I know, option to use uh, custom authoring components or even the generated authoring components. So if your project, again, uses that quite heavily, you will have to convert all those over to new, these new bakers. And there are definitely some things that you gotta get used to with the new baking workflow. So again, because there's no more generate authoring component tag, if you just say have you know one data component that just has one field on it, and you wanna be able to edit that field through the Unity editor, well now you actually have to go ahead and create three different scripts. So you have to create the base data component, then you also have to create a mono behavior which attaches to the actual game object that's in the subscene, and then that has the public value that you can actually edit. And then furthermore, you have to create a third script which is the actual baker script, and then the baker script basically communicates with that mono behavior, pulls the data from it, both um, you know, when you press the play button and continuously at runtime, which again is a, a definitely a nice feature and a step in the right direction. And that baker is also responsible for adding particular components to the entity. I do hope that they figure out a way to bring back something like the generate authoring component, because I do think that that's a good, simple solution for a lot of use cases. I will link off to a forum thread that goes into a little bit more of the technical details about this. I do think that it is a good, interesting read if you are a little bit more interested in, you know, kind of some of the reasons about some of the problems with the generate authoring component and some of their, you know, thinking going forward. Now, look, yes, Experimental Entities 1.0 is a little bit buggy, and of course they've called it Experimental Entities 1.0. This is very much experimental. It feels like the most experimental ECS has been in in quite some time, which is, you know, a good and a bad thing. You know, it's a good thing because we have all these new features, but it is a bad thing because you know the development experience is really not the best and probably not suited for you know production development right now. I'd say that if you are planning on making a production ready game using entities, probably want to stick with 0.51. That one has been you know pretty stable for me, and I don't even think I'd experienced any crashes with 0.50 or 0.51. But ultimately, I am happy that they released it even the state that it is in, because again, we can get these new API in our hands, start learning them, experimenting them with them and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's definitely really exciting for me in the position that I'm in and some of the things that I'm kind of trying to do. I definitely understand that it might be frustrating to some of the people who are looking forward to making a production ready project project that you know this experimental 1.0 is probably not the version for you right now. So I'd say in general, if you do want reliability, I'd say stick with 0.51 for now. But if you do want to experiment with you know all the new APIs and kind of start learning the new standards that are going to be the way that ECS is going forward, 
I'd say, you know, feel free to jump into 1.0. Just be aware that you may experience some bugs and some crashes here and there. So that being said, if you are planning on sticking with 0.51, I am going to be releasing my full nearly five hour tutorial course. Um, I'm just gonna be listing it as an unlisted video here on YouTube for now. I'll have some links to it down in the description. I'll also be posting them in the Discord and stuff like that. Um, mainly, I just don't want people to get confused about, you know, all the, the new versions and everything like that. Um, again, I do think this is a really good tutorial. There's a lot of really good information in there, but just be aware that, you know, some of the things that I'm going to be teaching in there are just, you know, completely irrelevant. Again, I'm going to be focusing quite heavily in that video on um, some things like the conversion workflow and custom authoring components. Whereas, you know, those things just do not even exist in Entities 1.0. But if you do want to experiment with Entities 1.0, and I highly recommend that you should, I will point you to a guide that Unity put out. This is by Brian and Fabrice of the Unity teams. And they do have a bunch of good resources in there that will help you understand about the theory of ECS. And they also do have a full written tutorial that shows you how to create a you know, nice, simple little project to, again, get you up and running with some of the new APIs with Entities 1.0. I will say that as I was following along with that tutorial myself, I did not experience any crashes or major issues or anything like that. So, you know, I do think it's a good, safe starting off point for you. And of course, stay tuned to this channel because I'm going to be showcasing all sorts of the new features in ECS 1.0. I'm going to be kicking things off with a kind of jumping in point that I'll call it um, that basically kind of goes over like an introduction to ECS. I think it's going to be a good starting off point for some of the people who are brand new to ECS or some of the people who have, uh, you know, kind of taken a break from it for a while and they just kind of want to you know, get up to speed with everything basically from zero. So uh, I'm going to end off this video just by showing you a little preview of that. So enjoy it and I will see you all in the next video.